Epidemiology in the Dock, Part 1. Bill Gates and Ferguson have company. It turns out the problem wasn't just them. It was every epidemiologist on the planet. Their entire science turns out to be fraudulent. And yeah, that's a big deal. Note to censors, we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. I found this to be utterly disturbing once I realised what I was on to. Logically, I ought to feel thrilled at the discovery, but it's like discovering that gravity is a lie, or if not that bad, then gee, how about democracy is a lie? Yeah, that was pretty shattering too. Ironic or not, that they're connected. If there was a Nobel Prize for debunking bad science, then this video would be a contender. It's as simple as that. And because it will likely only be watched by my hardcore viewers, I want to ensure that you get to share this with me properly without being freaked out by the language. What if every mobile phone navigator app consistently took you to the wrong place? How long do you think it would be before people noticed and started posting online? The premier models for epidemic modelling, the SIR and SCIR models, are utterly and deeply flawed and nobody noticed, not even when they gave us the BS about 530,000 UK deaths and 80% infected. I blamed Bill Gates for his exponential lie. I blamed Ferguson for his fraudulent 80% and 510,000, 530,000 as reported after the March 3rd press conference deaths. It turns out, like I robot, I was blaming the wrong people, or thing. You really can get those figures, and frighteningly easy, using the official epidemic models. We'll get to that in a moment. And nobody noticed they were insane. That hasn't changed. What has changed is that I assumed that Bill Gates was consciously lying, and that Ferguson had consciously misrepresented the figures from whatever model he used. Now it turns out they may both have accurately represented a model that should never have been allowed to exist. It really is that bad, but guess what? It's the official premier model for pandemic modelling. Go check it out. SIR model of infectious disease. Even Nukvikovsky, who's spoken so much common sense, had a slide of this model in one of his presentations. And herd immunity, of course, relies on it. And it's total BS. Which means epidemiology is total BS. Because they never noticed which means that while Bill Gates may have an agenda and Ferguson may indeed have followed orders in two specific regards, they didn't do anything that would be challenged by another epidemiologist because they referenced a standard model and got standard results. And they were BS not because they cheated, but because the model itself is BS. We'd already said that we're in this crisis to a degree because lazy epidemiologists used the exponential term in a way that left it wide open to be used by propagandists for the scare model of the COVID-19 threat. It was worse than that. We'd always said, if the government said it would be 8,000 degrees outside tomorrow, stay indoors, would you have complied or would your common sense experience have told you that something was amiss? The government would be a laughing stock unless a nuclear war started, in which case it wouldn't really matter. This time they warned us of a biological nuclear war, and because people aren't virologists or epidemiologists, and because virologists and epidemiologists love their models, the whole world accepted the word of the epidemiologists, and the epidemiologists accepted the output of their models. And nobody thought to apply a common sense check, except people like us, who weren't familiar with their models and didn't care. You just needed to look at the CDC death rates to know this wasn't an existential threat. You just needed to see that Hubei, worst hit province in China with 59 million people, only had 3085 deaths to know this wasn't an existential threat. So we never needed the models and so never checked them out, not properly, not till now. Why now? because something niggled me about our normal charts. Too many of them had tales like these, and I couldn't see countries like Turkey being part of the agenda, falsifying or exaggerating cases or deaths to encourage us to believe that there would be no normal till the vaccine. Too many, so what, in fact, 
if it was normal. The UK is superficially similar, but that growth decline tracks sideways at peak. The virus has no means of monitoring peak, but politicians do. Sweden likewise. The virus doesn't know that Sweden is a poster child for no lockdown, but politicians do. I don't want to falsely accuse Turkey, Austria and all those other nations, nor do I want to let the people punishing Sweden or manipulating the UK off the hook. And bear in mind that this does not affect the issue of power centres being hit a hundred times harder than the Far East. It's just one element and as with any court case, we really don't want to have any grounds for dismissal. We need to be right in a way that the government does not. It can send us into lockdown on a whim. It's the government. We have to be rock solid in our evidence to challenge that, so I went hunting tail. Which I seem to recall being rather more fun when I was younger, but what the heck. It brought me to this, the SEIR model, an officially recognised epidemic model and a very sensible one, or it seemed to be, at least. Wikipedia has an excellent piece on compartmental models, which is what SIR, SEIR, SI, SIRD are, all of which basically come down to one thing, you're susceptible, S, and you get infected, I, or infectious, or both, and sometimes you die. The variants are literally just additional or omitted possibilities. SIR equals susceptible infected recover. SI equals you don't recover ever, AIDS or herpes. SIRD, you recover or die. SEIR, well, and don't quote me, just giving examples to give an idea. SEIR, and I love the clarity of this website's work, is susceptible exposed infectious and recover. And yes, it has die variants, but we don't need that and can incorporate that separately. SEIR is a good fit for COVID-19 because you're exposed, you've got it, but while it's incubating, you're asymptomatic and it's not infectious from you. Then you become infectious to others and then you recover or die if you include that variant. Cheerful stuff, eh? But the killer, so to speak, thing is, as you can see, these are serious models. Okay, my bad. But seriously, yes, these are the big league, like Windows and Linux of, or is it Linux, of virus modeling systems. So if they're messed up and nobody's noticed, and I mean seriously messed up, how messed up is that? The good news is, you don't have to know the maths to understand the problem. I had a whole education thing going, but actually it's just not necessary. It's disturbingly simple. Once we've done the biggie, we'll do the other biggies and maybe go into some detail. You mean there's more than one problem with their flagship models? Oh yeah, three offhand, crazy. So let me introduce you to the SEIR model and in fact, let's keep it even simpler and use the SIR model. You're susceptible, you get infected, you recover. Easy enough, yes, COVID has a death risk as well, but it's not material to understanding the flaw. Here's the model. And again, we'll keep it simple and guess what? Call it exponential. Cases double every day. We're really going to go for it. So what happens? You know what exponential looks like racing to the moon. We don't even need to chart it. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 7 days and 128 times as many people infected. A week later and it's 16,000. Three weeks, 21 million. A month, a billion. Wait a minute, we've only got 66 million in the UK. Shh. Five weeks, 34 billion. Hang on, we've only got six or seven billion people on the planet. Shut it. Six weeks, four trillion. If we'd had one infected on 3rd of March, Boris' first big announcement and doubled every day, we'd have... I don't know, what is that? 19 billion... 566, 100 billion, billion. A lot. Infected by today, 5th of June, as I write this. Phew, just as well, it isn't really doubling every day, but only once every five days per Ferguson's ICCRT Report 9, which means we've only got 456,000 infected, about 90k cases, symptomatic, worthy of hospital, and 4,500 deaths in our simplistic exponential model. But by 30th of June, we'll have 14,605,000 infected, and by 31st of July, we'll have 1,073,000,000 infected. And enjoy your August holiday or not, because then we'll have 
79 billion infected. And that's just the UK. Wait till it hits the rest of the world. Now, is the model really that stupid? Of course not. Remember Bill Gates. Because human-to-human -human transmissible respiratory vices can grow exponentially, and if we'd kept on going to work, travelling like we were, that curve would never bend until you had the majority of the people infected, and then a massive number seeking hospital care, and lots and lots of deaths. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen me lambast him for that exponentially. No, it's not exponential. And then magically it bends from straight on a log scale implied so he knows his stuff. And no, exponential doesn't bend. Except here's the thing. My observations are correct, but so are his. If you believe the model. It's the darndest thing, but there's cases, which we'll discuss in a second, on the SEIR model. It goes straight up exponentially, just like Gates said, then it curls magically and goes horizontal, just like Gates said. Here's V, victim if you like, viralized, virused, whatever, formerly had it or have it. For the UK, straight up exponential till it magically curves at the last moment, just like Gates said. Whatever he may or may not have misrepresented, other than this particular sentence, I have to apologise. It was not his invention that it goes up exponentially and then bends. That absurdity is on epidemiologists. So it turns out that not only were they lazy with language, they weren't even being lazy. They really had built a model that was exponential and they use it as their flagship model, even though no virus grows exponentially. Population growth, logistic function, not exponential or even close. Real world charts, 214 countries, not even close to exponential. But their flagship model is exponential and nobody noticed. And we'll see how readily it produces Ferguson's numbers. Hell, I produced his numbers putting correct data in and if I'd published that would be me under attack. The difference being, hopefully just as I didn't rely on the model but looked at the real world, hopefully I'd have done that in his shoes, but he didn't so he's not off the hook. But in this one specific accusation, I withdraw it unreservedly. Any epidemiologist trusting their primary model would have generated numbers similar to those that Ferguson did. He may have chosen to ignore Hubei and South Korea. He may have been encouraged to publish an egregious estimate. He may or may not have been serving an agenda. But in this one particular, he cannot be accused of fraud. He put in legitimate numbers as I did, and he got the numbers he got. And I got similar from the model, the world's primary epidemiological model, and its BS. I spared you a great deal of tech stuff, which I may do here or may do as a follow-on, but the import is profound, to say the least. Imagine relying on a cancer test that was guaranteed to be wrong. What kind of medical malpractice suits could that lead to? Their core epidemiological model is BS from the get-go. But why? Have you spotted the flaw, other than the nonsense of rising exponentially till everyone is sick and a lot of us die? Didn't I even use almost that exact phrase to ridicule the falseness of the propaganda? I assumed it was a deliberate falsehood, propaganda. No, it was an absurd model that nobody spotted is absurd until now when I can show you the flaw built into the model from the outset. And it's breathtakingly simple. Here's another SEIR forecast with 7 billion victims, the whole world infected by COVID-19. Did I manipulate the figures, as in put in false figures? No, I put in N equals 7 billion. That's what you're supposed to do. DS by DT equals minus BIS over N. Don't sweat it, just N is one of the required parameters of the model. It's the population at risk. So wait a minute, you put in the population of e.g. your country and it uses that figure to tell you that everyone in your country gets infected. Is that it? Is that what you're telling me? Believe it or not, yes. Their flagship model is everyone gets infected, no escape. And by the way, it happens really fast because it's exponential. That isn't just scummy agenda propaganda pushing conspirators who want us all dead. That's official, mainstream, totally legitimate epidemiological modelling, totally authorised by every epidemiologist and virologist, and it's total BS. 
Let's just show how BS it is with a simple thought experiment. World population 7 billion, keep that as it is. Contagion starts in the Isle of Wight, population 145,000. One person, two, four, eight, whatever, use our simple rapid exponential or slow, it doesn't matter. 7 billion people at risk, n equals 7 billion. How many people get infected and fall victim to the virus? 7 billion. Now here's the thing, and it's funny how it works out, I've been meaning to do a thing on the only effective strategy that is blatantly obviously effective in all the data I've seen, and it's not lockdown or social distancing. It's blockade. 34 provinces in China, Hubei got 84% of cases, 96% of deaths, everyone else got basically zip, nada, nix, not worth mentioning. That's the kind of isolation that works. The virus doesn't have air miles. Humans do. No air travel. No visitors in or out. Not to a home, but to a country or region at all. And did any country other than China implement that? US 50 states, easy. Cities, towns, villages, easy. No, they chose the harshest granularity, smallest, stay in your home, and still let you travel if you had to. Priceless. They rendered ineffective the one thing that China proved unequivocally was effective and implemented something that turned out to be utterly ineffective. Way to go, Boris. But back to the Isle of Wight. Population 145,000, and I forgot to mention it's under blockade and religious law prevents islanders travelling and there's a sea of burning fire preventing visitors in or out. How many victims does SEIR predict? N equals 7 billion victims equals 7 billion. How the hell did the virus get off the island? It's in the small print. Do not use except for tightly packed homogeneous populations else it's BS. Only it doesn't say it quite like that. Did epidemiologists remember the small print? No. If there's an outbreak in London, how fast will the virus get to Edinburgh? Intercity? By plane? 45 minutes? A. Blockade and B. Without blockade, it's still a challenge. Why the do you think they invented this social distancing nonsense? 500 miles away is a big social distance. Ask the SMP. Just like a fire, the virus fails if it can't jump the gap and miles are more than two meters. The moment someone tries to apply one of these premium epidemic models to anything bigger than a rave party, it's a complete waste of space. Which recalls the Diamond Princess with a ship, compact, crowded, the perfect viral heaven, and it still only managed 20% infected. But the primary model of epidemiologists says 100% infected every time. Brilliant! Believe me, I'm going to be double-checking, triple-checking, and checking again and again because I cannot believe something so fundamental can be so flawed. But it boils down to this. Science's most revered model for epidemic modelling says, how many people are we talking about in your population? OK, fine, give me a sec. There, they're all infected. Next, please. That isn't modelling. That's arithmetical BS. And you recall 80% infected? Wait till you see where that comes from. That's it for now. Don't bother trolling. This was a layman's introduction. We'll be going into serious detail in further presentations. If your desire to troll survives the science, well, go ahead. Always a pleasure to respond. I'm Andrew May. There are a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch. Andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.